So how's everyone doing? How's everyone's summer going? Has anybody did anything interesting with their summer so far? Something worth mentioning? Yeah, what'd you get? A book? A book? Yes! Wait, what book? What book? The Power of Six. Guess what? Sounds like a good one. Guess what? Josh, Josh, the next one comes out in a month. I'm not gonna read that. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I did this in Sunday school once. Does anyone here have their Bible with them, their physical Bible with them? Can you hold it up? One time I don't. I did this in Sunday school. Now, if you look at your Bible, on the right hand side, there's like a third of it that's a lot more dirtier than the left hand side. Does anybody know why? Why, Jordan? Because that's the New Testament, and nobody reads the Old Testament, right? It's not for today. Except for that little section in the middle called Psalms and Proverbs. So, I just want to encourage you. I said this in Sunday school, so those that are in Sunday school, they know this. Um, I want to encourage you to dirty up those clean pages on the left-hand side. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start that tonight. We're going to go into a book that I'm sure half of you haven't heard of. It's called Habakkuk. It's Habakkuk. It's Habakkuk. It's, it's, it's okay? Habakkuk. Dad, how do you pronounce it? You went to Bible college. I don't know. I'm looking this up. All right, vote for Habakkuk. Come on. Oh, what? One person. All right, we're going Habakkuk. Everybody else. Okay, we'll open to that book. We just spelled that. Thanks. Appreciate it. Chapter 2, verse 2. Um, you know, Dave's gone, and and uh, usually he just lets me pretty much go with whatever I'm feeling, but he really wanted me to preach on vision. And... Uh, not necessarily seeing a physical vision, which is something we actually will talk about later, um, but having a vision, having a vision for your life. Um, does anyone know what, I, what I'm talking about when I mean? Like, what am I talking about when I say that? Like having a plan? Yeah, yeah, like a plan. You know, anyone else have a, like, what is a vision to you? What do you think vision is? Anyone? Because we're not moving on until someone talks. Go ahead. Is a future what? Okay, future goal. What does anyone else think vision is? When you hear the word vision, what do you think of? Sorry. Thank you. What was that? Eyesight, but if you take it in a literary context, it can mean a deep, insightful meaning to something. Nice. Okay, that's good. Like, does anyone else have a take on it that's not as intellectual that I would understand? Liz? Um, like a fortune teller because they crystal balls on things. That's what I think of when you say. Okay, that's that's what you think of. That's all right. What is what what comes to mind when you think of vision, Bridget? Helping other people? Okay. Elena? Your perspective on something? That's good. Basically, um, I'm going to... The, the actual definition of, of vision is the faculty or state of being able to see. Um, but the vision that I'm talking about is the vision that you have for your life. Like, like let's say I looked at you and asked you right now. Where do you see yourself in five years? And Dave did this to me the other day. He said, where do you see yourself in five years? And I was like, well, I expect to be a youth pastor somewhere, hopefully in the United States, in New York somewhere, but somewhere. And um, I hope to be married. And uh, that's where I, that's where I, yeah, it's my five year, I guess. <laughs> Pretty weak, huh? But no, I mean, I think it's really important that we start to look at what God's vision is for your life. We need to start exploring that, that God has a call and a vision to put on your life, something for you to, to put hope into and to put investment into and time into. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, um, it says, Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. Now, basically, on the bottom of um, when it says what herald means, 
or that whoever reads it, so if we put that in there, and so that whoever reads it may run with it. For the revelation awaits, on a point, awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it lingers, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. And I think we need to focus on having not only a vision for yourself, but a vision for this group. Like, you know, our slogan, love, grow, serve. You know, what does that mean to you? Like, yeah, we're building relationships, we're making disciples, but what is the vision of this group that you see? Um, I'm going to have Holly pass something out in a little bit, not now. Um, I made up these sheets for us. We're going to write down what my, what your vision is, your personal vision, and then what your vision is for this group. And then I want to discuss about how, how, can we, how can we achieve that, you know? And how important it is to share that vision with someone else and how, um, how we can achieve the vision that God has for our lives, praying about it and making sure that it's God's vision for our life, not just our vision. Um, and I wanted to, uh, to take you to a, a story. It's in Acts, and it's chapter 8. I hate having people that went to Bible college in the room because then they know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's chapter 10. Ha! Ah, put a little curveball there, didn't I? Single to double digit. No. Chapter 10, verse 9. Now, basically, if you how many people have read the book of Acts? I mean, don't lie. If you haven't read it, don't put your hand up. Have you read the book of Acts? I've heard stories about it. I've heard stories about it. Who's actually physically read the book of Acts? I mean, come on. If you've read the book of Acts, be proud of it. Put your hand up. Okay? Some people have been you've read the book of Acts. Not the whole thing. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, I want to talk about what's going on here. I want to give you a little bit of a background on what's going on. Jesus <clears throat> rose from the dead. He's gone now. Now it's just the disciples, right? And Peter, one of his disciples, is, he, he's eating. He's eating lunch, basically, called lunch. And uh, he's sitting on this rooftop. And uh, I'm going to read this to you in a little bit, but what's going on in context all around him is there's big revival going on. Christianity, which is what we are and you are, you're Christians. And Christians are, they just got their beginning. Every, this is all just starting. And the Christianity right now was exclusively, they thought, for the Jewish community. You know, and they, they didn't think that the Gentiles could, they weren't worthy, they weren't holy, they, they should not be allowed to know this or be this or whatever. And, and that, that was a big hang up of, of what these guys are getting hung up on because they're like, well, I don't want to tell the Gentiles about it. So I'm just not going to, you know. So it's, it's a, big, a big issue right now. And this is how it gets resolved. Um, about noon the following day, this is verse 9, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. Um, and prior to this, just a little bit of a let you know, Cornelius, he is a, uh, he's, a he Gentile. Yeah, he, he is a Gentile, yeah. But I, I is he Greek? Believe he's a general, he, he's, he's, a public, he's a public figure. Um, Centurion. Centurion, there you go, thank you. Um, he sent men to go get Peter. And uh, while they're on their way, this is all happening. Uh, Peter went by the, on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while Amir was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw, heaven, he saw heaven opened and something like a large sheep being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. Now, to the, to the Jewish people, this was really wrong, to eat something like a reptile. Um, I mean, that was described in the Old Testament. You don't do that. That's unclean. It's, it's not right. You can't do that and go into the presence of God. They didn't want to do this. So he's like all appalled, like, no, I'm not going to eat that. Uh, the voice spoke to him a second time and said, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Now, if you notice, if you have a Bible like mine, the words of Jesus are in red. These words are in red because Jesus is speaking to Peter right now. He says, Do not 
call anything impure that God has made unclean or made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius uh, found out where Simon, also known as Peter, house was, and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up, go downstairs, and do not hesitate to go with them. I sent them. For you. Peter went down and said to them, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the Centurion, who is a righteous and God fearing man, who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that you could hear what um, so he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men to, into his house to be guests. Peter goes long story short, Peter goes to Cornelius' house. And he preaches a message. He, he talks with them. And they're all Gentiles. Peter's a Jew, and they're all Gentiles. And the Gentiles get filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the Gentile community starts to come to Christ. And they start to be Christians, and they start to get filled with the Holy Spirit. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of issues there between the Jewish and the Gentile. They're all just like, dude, you can't do that. You know, that's not right. But God said, you know, and... And that was a big thing back then. But the main thing here is, Peter had a vision. Peter had a vision from God that said, look, go with that guy, go to his house, and tell him what I need you to tell him, because I'm going to use it. Now, if you were to think, what if Peter didn't listen? What if Peter didn't listen to this vision that he had? If he didn't go when he was asked to go, or went where he was supposed to go, would the Gentiles ever have filled the Holy Spirit? Yeah, probably down the road. But this was God planned and God ordained. And from it, we're here today. Gentiles. So we are. We're not Jewish, we're Gentiles. And we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And I just think it's so interesting that a vision, something that came from God, sparked something so alive, we're still seeing it today, that's who we are, is today, because of Peter's obedience to the vision, and his sensitivity to listen to the vision. You know, Peter was just praying. He was just trying to seek God's will for his life. And I think, you know, if we did that, if we just gave, gave God that time, really plugged in and said, God, I want to hear from you. I want to know. I want to know what your vision is for my life. Where do you see me in five years? Not where I see myself. Where do you see me? So start, I just want to encourage you to start looking for God's vision for your life. Um. And I, I, I just I just wanna I just wanna kind of a, an example I guess. Does anyone remember Tarzan? Yeah. You know the guy with like the little loincloth thing that would like Yeah, that's Tarzan. He's pretty cool. I think Tarzan is pretty cool, because like, first of all, he rocks the loincloth and keeps it on all the time. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> but this guy He's like in the jungle, right? He lives out there. And he swings from these branches, and you're just like watching these vines. He's just swinging from these vine to vine. I mean, you know, and you're just looking at him like, okay, this is, you know. But when I think about Tarzan, it's, it's interesting because when he goes from one vine to the next, it's perfectly measured out that he grabs the vine at the right place and it like is perfectly to the next vine and like perfectly to the next vine. And it's just like completely like, wow, it's perfect. Tarzan is perfect. These vines, they work for Tarzan. You know? It's just like, how does he do that? He's a monster. He's a monster. And he never falls. Actually, he does, doesn't he? Most of the Isn't that like the comic of swing? Yeah, he hits a tree. Yeah, he hits a tree. That's George. That's George. See, I'm talking about the real jungle guy, Tarzan. Okay? Is that the one with Peter Gabriel singing the song? I know. But think about it. Okay? Thank you. A lot of times my mom says to me, she's like, why did he do that? I'm like, because mom, it's in the script. Like, when we're watching TV shows and, like, some guy dies, he's like, why did he do that? Because it's in the script. But, you know, think about your life kind of like that. You know, you're, 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 like, imagine yourself in this tree, right? I mean, I'm not jumping, and I'm not doing it on a vine that I don't know if it's going to hold my weight, number one. If it's going to get me to the next vine, number two, where is the next vine? And how it's all going to work out. It, it, it's it's a movie, yeah, but 
think about it as in like your future life. You think and you're like, how is that going to work? How am I going to get from point A to point B? How is vine A going to get me to vine B? You know, how does that all work? And that takes faith in God to line up, line up those, I guess you could call them vines of your life. You know, it's something that you need to concentrate on God's will and seek out what that is in order to line up what God has for you to get from that point to the next point in your life. And I just thought that was an interesting example. Um, uh, just, just how you know, it's, it's not, it's just there. They're always there, and it's life isn't like that. You have to really plan it. And seek God's will and, and get to know God. And I was I was talking to a friend of mine earlier, and uh, just talking about you know future stuff. You know, I mean, you know, college and thinking about stuff. And uh, you know, he asked me, "How do you how do you hear from God?" Because you because you know Him. You got to get to know Him. You have to read His Word to know Him, and you got to pray. Because when you have a relationship, you know, I say a lot of people, you know, we say in here all the time, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. Because you have a relationship with God, you get up every morning or, or whenever you do get up and you spend time with Him, you pray, you read His Word, your basic instructions before leaving earth. You tap into what God has for you and you get to know Him, then you get to hear from Him because you know. Like I, I, was, I was saying, I was saying to a friend of mine, I was like, now imagine yourself in We'll say Egypt because nobody knows Egyptian. And I, if anyone begs to differ, I don't like it. Can't say Spain because everyone knows Spanish. But anyway, if you go to Egypt, and Arabic, and Arabic. Well, I'm thinking hieroglyphics and pictures and stuff. And, okay, and English. Go to Egypt and you're speaking Arabic. Like, if you go there, I mean, how many people know Arabic? Honestly, on a real level, know Arabic. I know, I know, I know one person. Everybody <laughs> talking at the same time. Google Translate app. <laughs> but if you're like, if you're looking for the bathroom and you don't know how to say bathroom in Arabic, you're in trouble because you don't know it. You don't know this stuff. You don't practice. You don't go around your house. Hey, Dad. You don't go around your house. <laughs> You don't go around your house speaking Arabic all the time, or you don't read Arabic books, do you? Does anyone here read an Arabic book? I did, but I couldn't understand it. It's hard to write. You don't understand it. You had but if you went home and you practiced Arabic every day, you spoke it, you read an Arabic book every day and trying to learn how to do this, like, like your Spanish textbooks at school or French, whatever you take, that's how you learn the language. That's how you know how to communicate with that language. And the same thing is with God. If you speak with God, you start to just have that relationship with Him. You start to read His Word, His book. You start to understand who He is. And when you start to understand who He is... You start to feel it. You start to hear him talking to you. You get to just like, God, I really need to know what to do with this. And God starts revealing himself to you because you show it, you're showing that you want to be in his way. You want to be used by him. And that God, God does have a vision for you, but here's what it is. So I just want to I wanna start getting at, you know, this year we're, we're starting stuff in September. And, I, you know, we're going to start the apprentice in a, in a a week or so, and I just want to start putting inside of your hearts, what is your vision? What are you doing with the time that you have here now? What is, your, what, what, is, what is this group's vision? You're a part of this group, and we want you to be involved in this group. What is your vision for this group? Are you praying about that? Are you praying about starting a ministry in this group? Like starting like a concession stand ministry, or starting a welcoming ministry, or starting like altar ministry? Or, or planning on being on the worship team? Are you praying about that? Do you want to be involved here? Do you want to be a part of this group? Do you want to invest in this group? And if so, I want to encourage you to start praying about that. And start seeing, you know what? God really wants me to do this. And I strongly feel that in my heart because I've been praying about it. And I really know that God wants me to do this because I've been talking to Him about it a lot. God will reveal this stuff to you. And He will use you. Just ask Him and see what that vision is.